Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final face-to-face -face at four digital conference session, Art Making with Studio in a School, and happy International Arts Education Week to everyone. My name is Kinsey Keck. I am the face-to-face -face conference manager, as well as the NYC Arts and Education Roundtable Coordinator. Face to Face is hosted by the New York City Arts and Education Roundtable. We are a grassroots service organization that works to improve and advance the state of arts education through professional development workshops, advocacy, and online resources and platforms to connect the arts education field. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we get our session started. If you're having any trouble with Zoom, please refer to the one sheet that was forwarded to you with the login information for today's call. We will pop a link to that in the chat box right now as well. In that email, we also included a list of materials that you will need to participate in the art making for today's session. Kim is posting that list in the chat box too. Um, so take this time to make sure that you have everything at hand. The coffee in that list is intended to act as our ink for print printmaking. So if you don't have coffee, that's okay. Um, a very strongly brewed cup of tea will work with maybe an extra tea bag or two. Uh, hot water with turmeric could work from your spice cabinet. Soy sauce, basically any staining agent that you have in your household we can make do with. Uh, we encourage you during this session to use the chat box to share resources, ask questions, and connect with other participants. The chat box transcript will be saved and shared in a follow-up email after the session. Uh, this call does include closed captioning. To activate this setting, please click the little arrow next to the closed captioning button and select show subtitles. In that same menu is subtitle settings and you can adjust the size of your captions there. Uh, the Roundtable is thrilled to offer face-to-face -face at 4 p.m. as a free weekly digital learning series due in large part to our very generous sponsors. Today's session is sponsored by Disney. We will post the recording of this session on our website, YouTube, and Vimeo channels for the arts ed community to access. We will also aggregate any resources that come up during the session and a link to the recording and all of those materials will be emailed to you within a day or two after this call. I think that's it for notes. So without further ado, I would like to turn it over to our fantastic artist facilitators, Langdon Graves and Nabila Dadaboy of Studio in a School. Langdon? All right. Hi, everyone. Um, I am excited to be here with all of you. I can already see some familiar faces, which is kind of exciting. It's almost like we're here in person. Um, I am going to tell you a little bit about uh, myself and a little bit about studio and then we're going to jump right into the session. Um, as I said, my name is Langdon. I've been a teaching artist with studio for almost 14 years, uh, which went by really quickly. Um, I've taught in a lot of uh, studios various programs. So I've worked with students from ages three all the way up through high school and also I've done professional development with teaching artists. Um, if you're not familiar with Studio in a School, um, it was founded over 40 years ago. It serves over 30,000 students across New York City. We partner really closely with school communities to bring art instructions to uh, kids ages um, three all the way through 12th grade. Um, we also do professional development for classroom teachers. We do uh, family engagement and a lot of community events. Um, I teach across the city in a lot of different schools and programs and studio in a school is um, something that I've really enjoyed learning from over the years. So we have also been looking forward to this session um, with you today. Nabila and I have been looking forward to it. We've done some practice sessions to get ready for it. We want to thank uh, the round table for this opportunity to have an art making experience with all of you. Uh, so this workshop is going to be a two parter. I'm going to start um, and I'm going to lead you through a contour line drawing um, exercise uh, that's um, a little bit guided so um, it's not going to be too open. Um, and then I'm going to turn it over to Nabila to do a printmaking activity. Um, and then following our activities, um, we're going to do a really short reflection with you all at the end and then we're going to invite you to contribute something to that reflection and we're going to share some resources with you. So um, I am joining you from Brooklyn today. Um, I am actually in my stepdaughter's bedroom because it has the best light and it turns out to also have the best Wi-Fi. Um, and I have left our map of the moon up behind me because I think it's uh, got some good energy going on. So we've got a little 
little lunar energy. Um, I'm a drawing based artist. It's sort of the core of my practice. Um, so I love to talk about drawing and I love drawing with other people. I also make sculpture and I do installation, uh, but drawing is really my first love. Um, what I am going to do with you all today is something that I um, often do with my graduate students. I teach in the fine arts program at Pratt as well. Um, it's a warm up activity that we like to do before we start drawing from observation. Um, it's going to be in three parts. The first thing we're going to do is a blind contour study, which everyone has done, I'm sure. Um, but I find it to be very meditative and it's really a nice way to start drawing uh, because you're really looking and not thinking about what you're drawing, not concentrating on um, what, it, what it looks like. Uh, the second thing we're going to do is a non-dominant hand drawing, um, which uh, for those of you who have done it, um, you know about the awkwardness. Um, for those of you who have never done a non-dominant hand drawing, um, get ready for a, a really wonky feeling at first, um, but it is terrific exercise for your brain. Um, it actually opens up both hemispheres. There have been a lot of studies about how working with your non-dominant hand can be really great for creativity. Um, and then the last thing we're going to do is what my middle school art teacher used to call an 80-20 drawing. So you are looking this time and concentrating. You're able to see the drawing that you're making. But 80% of the time, you're looking at your subject. And 20% of the time, you're looking at your drawing. So you're really still focused on looking at your subject at that point. Um, I'm going to share my screen to show uh, a few drawings. Let's see. Uh, just to kind of get us started, I'm going to go into present mode. Okay, on the left there is a print that Nabila did, um, which she's going to introduce you to later. And on the right is a drawing by one of my students, actually, which I'll talk about in, in a little while. Um, a blind contour, as you all know, is one that you make without looking at your drawing. I like to think that they look like a drawing um, that fell apart, so it's just sort of sagging. Um, but I find that there's a lot of poetry in blind contour. Um, I love the way they look. Um, this is an example of a non-dominant hand, and I can look at this and see all the moments when I knew I was sort of wobbling around. Um, and then here's another example of a blind contour and also an example of um, an object that you could work from. Here I have on the right, uh, well on the left I have my lemon and on the right I have um, a non-dominant hand drawing of a plant and then I have um, an 80-20 drawing of the lemon. So by that point I was already starting to feel a little bit more loose and fluid. And here are a few more examples of contour line drawings and also um, subjects that you could work from. And I am going to stop sharing now. Um, and I want to talk just for a second about some of the materials I have gathered. I just have objects from around the house, like these old broken pliers. Um, I have my grandmother's old atomizer. I have a potato masher. Um, and I have my very strong cup of coffee that I'm going to be using for Nabila's exercise. I also have some plants around. Um, the irises are blooming in my backyard right now. So I have been drawing some of these. Um, so it's whatever objects are kind of around um, because I'm in my stepdaughter's room. I actually have her little tiny tea set. Uh, so there's a lot to work from here. Um, and I am also going to show you really quickly some materials that I have gathered. So I'm going to be working mostly with a micron pen um, because it's going to show up a lot better on the screen for you all. I also have a really sharp pencil. Um, I have a pencil sharpener just in case. And then if you want to um, work on your drawings later, not while you're working on them, just draw freely, um, you might want to have an eraser. So that's what we are going to start with. And I am going to Take a few minutes and I'm going to lead you all into um, a blind contour um, and then I'm going to give you five minutes to do one on your own. I'm going to draw while you're working. I'm going to try to have this be as much like it would be in an actual studio or classroom setting with you all, which means I'm going to be quiet sometimes and let you work and really kind of concentrate. Um, and I think Kim and Kinsey are going to play some music for you all while that's um, happening. So hopefully you can kind of uh, relax into it a little bit. So I'm going to tilt my computer down like this. And I also am going to turn on a light so you all can see my hands and my workspace. 
Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a little shield uh, so that I don't feel tempted to look at my drawing while I'm working on it. I did this first with children, but I found that even my graduate students like to do this. So if you find that it's hard to not look at what you're drawing, you can give yourself a little shield like this. I just tore a piece of paper out of my sketchbook. Um, and I'm gonna draw these pliers for my first blind contour. Oh, thank you. I hear the beautiful Aphex Twin music. Um, I am gonna just pick a point to start and then I'm gonna draw what I see. And the thing with blind contour, as you probably know, is that once you pick your pen or your pencil up, it's really hard to figure out where you were before. So I do recommend backtracking. Um, and I remember the first time I did a contour line drawing, my teacher talked about thinking about it like a string that stays connected, that holds the whole drawing together. And I'm working a little faster than I recommend working, just because I want to make sure I give you plenty of time to draw but I recommend slowing down as much as you can. And as we know, talking and drawing are hard to do at the same time. So I'm trying not to yell. Okay. Now I'll turn this around just so you can kind of see what I see on my end. Um, and again, it looks like a drawing fell apart. So you can sort of see all the details and all the parts, uh, but they don't quite make a perfect drawing. And that actually, to me, is a perfect drawing. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put five minutes on my timer and I'm gonna let you all choose um, an object that you would like to draw and just spend five minutes doing a blind contour. If you find that you're going very quickly before the five minutes is up, um, sometimes what I'll do is I'll turn my object just another way and I'll draw it again right next to the other one or you could pick another object. So I'm going to go ahead and put five minutes on my timer and I'm going to let you all begin.
about two more minutes. And really slow yourself down if you find that you're going quickly. All right, there's our timer. I'm gonna move my lamp out of the way. Um, so now I thought I would show you all, let me go to my speaker view, um, all of the drawings that I was just working on and I would love to see what you've been working on. If you can hold it up to your cameras Oh, wow, awesome. These are so great. I see some flowers and some kitchen objects, some pliers, a fan. Oh, that is so nice. Awesome. Um, earlier, I was doing another one of these and um, I just did a whole lot on one page. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, I like to do that with contour line rather than plan a composition, especially when I'm just doing studies to practice. I just kind of layer everything on top of everything else. I think it can make for a beautiful accidental composition. So the next thing we're going to do is going to be a little awkward, um, but also fun. Um, I recommend that you get yourself a clean piece of paper. So I'm just going to, or you can work on the same piece if you want to, if you've got enough room, but it's kind of nice to see clearly what each exercise has been. I'm just going to flip my piece of paper over. Um, and this time, rather than demonstrating ahead of time, we're going to do this all together. And I'm going to set five minutes again on my clock. Um, so this is, you're on the honor system. <laughs> if you are right-handed, you are now left-handed for the next five minutes. And if you're left-handed, you will be right-handed. Um, you're gonna notice that you're drawing from your shoulder, probably. Your body is gonna be sort of like thrown for a loop a little bit. So you're gonna be overcompensating um, for how uh, it's gonna feel uncomfortable, but it's actually super good for you. In fact, when I do this with my grad students, sometimes they will do this for the entire three hours of the session because once you lock into it, it feels kind of good. Um, so I'm going to um, select an object to draw from. Um, I invite you all to do the same. You can do the same object for every drawing if you want to. Um, and I am going to shift this back down. I'm going to bring my fancy light back over and I am going to ask the DJ to put the music back on. <laughs> All 
Okay. And we're starting with five minutes now. Just take your time. Try to stick to contour line. Nice, smooth, continuous. Uh, resist the urge to do a sketchy line just to kind of keep yourself a little bit more measured. I really love the line quality that comes
Um, so we'll just lower the music for a second and I'm gonna go over one more thing with you all. And at this point too, it might be helpful to take a deep breath because that actually can feel like physical work sometimes doing the non-dominant hand drawing. Um, some of my students, I can hear this like collective sigh when, I, when we end, uh, end that exercise. Um, I would again, really love to see what everyone um, made. If you wouldn't mind holding it up to your camera so we can kind of feel like we're all in class together. Oh, I love this, glasses. Oh, someone else has an atomizer? Get out of town. That is so cool. I see some beautiful plants. Oh, another pair of glasses. Nice, somebody's got a crown on, very nice. I love this. Um, okay, so uh, the last thing we're gonna do is gonna feel hopefully um, more fluid now that you're a little bit warmed up. Ideally, I would do this with you all for about two hours before we really sort of felt like we were settling into the drawing. So I invite you after this activity, later tonight, tomorrow, next week, um, to return to this and kind of give yourself the experience again if you like it. Um, I am going to also show you a drawing I was working on earlier of um, all non-dominant hand drawings. Um, and I brought another color ink in as well um, because I'm in my stepdaughter's room I stole her markers um, which are nice and thin so they worked out really well sometimes it's nice to introduce a second color um, and I again I love the way it looks when they're all just kind of overlapping and stacked on top of each other so you really don't have to think very much about composition for this um, so the last thing we're going to do is our 80 20 80 percent of the time we're going to look at our object 20% of the time we can really fuss with our drawing and stare at our page. Um, but the way that you really didn't have a lot of control over the way the drawing came out with the other two drawings, uh, really kind of keep that approach and don't um, judge what's coming out of it. Don't criticize yourself. Don't worry about any inaccuracies. Just enjoy the experience and, and practice looking. Um, I am going to think about what objects I want to draw. I'm going to draw this bottle of insecticide because unfortunately I need it for my plants. Um, and we're going to play music one more time. And this time I'm going to give you all seven minutes. So you have just a little bit more time. Um, and you can draw more than one object this time if you want to. And you can even start to think about planning a composition, but you don't have to. Um, I am going to go ahead and angle my screen down one more time. And I'm gonna swivel my light back over. And if the DJ wouldn't mind bringing the music up again. And I'm gonna put seven minutes on the clock. Go ahead. Langdon, as you're drawing, a question came in in the chat box. Um, to, I guess it was private to me, but do you know if we're allowed to lift the pen and and stick to outlines? Uh, you may lift the pen, um, and I would say all interior lines, not just outside lines, but any line you see, really go for detail at this point. And now that you're looking at your paper, absolutely, you can pick up your pen and move it around. Great, thank you. Thank you.
to start my wine day and a wide one, which the wine doesn't follow all the way across the contour. Especially if you're seeing something super light, like I was drawing a plant earlier, and sometimes the veins and the leaves disappear halfway across the leaf. And it's nice to just lighten up your pen in those places so that you don't have too heavy of a line. We've got three more minutes on this. about a minute and a half. That's our time for drawing. I am going to quickly share a screen with you all um, to um, have you see just a few more examples of what this activity can turn into. Oh, starting share screen will stop another's computer. Yes, okay. Uh, let's go back to that presentation we were taking a look at earlier. Um, and I just want to show you a few examples, oops, here we go, um, of objects that you can work with later on that make beautiful compositions all on their own. This is a student's drawing from one of my high school sessions. Keys are really terrific. They have so much personality and great negative space. 
Um, this is one of my favorite student drawings ever. I taught an online drawing class. I teach online at Parsons, and this is one of those subjects that we hate looking at in real life, but somehow made a beautiful drawing. This is a student who'd never taken a drawing class before, so I was so pleased with this. Um, just a really poetic, beautiful drawing. Um, and this is another one of my favorite student pieces. It was done by one of my high school students a few years ago who um, was not a drawer, so to speak. Um, she was pre-med actually um, at Midwood High School going into Brooklyn College, so you can see the stethoscope. Um, she just started drawing the objects that she had in her bag or in her house um, and kind of turned it into an inventory, which I thought made a really beautiful composition. Um, and lastly, I want to share with you, if you don't already know this artist, Michael Craig Martin, um, he's one of my favorite artists and he really, um, his whole practice revolves around contour line and he does some really terrific things with it. Here he's overlapped these two objects so they both look um, kind of see-through. Um, and then this is another drawing of his, it's actually a painting. Um, I love how he works with scale and kind of messes with it. So the safety pin is just as large as a shoe in the lower left um, corner, for example. Um, there's something really nice about treating all of these objects the same and kind of doing away with depth and uh, prioritization. So um, those are the two uh, or the, or the few things that I wanted to share with you. This is all going to be available to you um, in a PowerPoint that we're going to share too at the end if anybody wants to come back to this. Um, I hope you all had a nice experience drawing. I am going to, yay, um, I'm going to shift it over to, oh wait, one more time. I didn't do this. If you would just share what you made, it would be awesome to see everybody's 8020s. Oh, I'm seeing some nice big drawings too. Ah, oh, so nice. I love this. You guys are the best. A teddy bear. Sweet. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Nabila and I'm excited for her printmaking session. All right. So thank you so much, Langdon. It was um, so nice to um, do this drawing with you and it really put me in, in the right mood to get to printmaking. Um, I'll actually go ahead and share my screen just so that we get everything ready for um, the printmaking activity. This is a good time to like take a big breath, get some of the materials ready. Um, so we'll need three sheets of paper and uh, similar to Langdon's activity, we want to do like a, we want to think of this as an exploratory process. Um, we're going to get some really strong coffee or other pigments, soy sauce, turmeric tea, whatever works for you. Um, a paper towel, rag, objects to print. And um, for those objects, you'll want to think about um, kind of the different objects that you have that may have certain flat edges um, or flat surfaces. Um, so forks, slotted spatulas, potato mashers. I actually think anything with an embossed design or lettering works really well. Um, and so I'm going to stop sharing right now, um, but I, before, while you're assembling and getting that ready, if you haven't already, um, I'll just introduce myself. So my name is Nabila Dadaboy. I am um, a teaching artist with Studio in a School. Um, I've been with Studio just in my second year, so not nearly <laughs> as long as Langdon, um, but it's been a pleasure. And what I really appreciate about the studio process has been um, that there will often be days in the classroom where it's very exploratory. So um, with collage, for instance, there's one day dedicated to just ripping and tearing paper with your hand in order to, um, in order to get familiar with the materials. Um, and similarly with this printmaking project, I want us to think of it as an exploration. Um, we're using household materials here, and so they're not gonna be nearly as predictable as um, artists' grade materials. Um, but this is a way to really look uh, carefully at objects around you um, in a different way. Um, so let me go ahead I'm going to do a similar thing to Langdon did. I'm going to just tilt my, um, my camera down. I'm going to show you some of the objects that I have. So I have like my potato masher, my fork, 
and I have um, some coffee prepared here. It's, it's a good amount of coffee, uh, but we honestly won't need this much. Um, we're going to uh, apply a fairly thin layer to the surfaces. You will need, though, that rack. Um, so I'm going to get one of these sheets of paper, and this is really just for exploration, right? Um, so I'm going to take my coffee, and let's say I get my potato masher. I can dip it into the coffee um, to create a stamp. Um, I'll show you other ways of applying this as well. So we can press it down into the paper. And creates our mark. Um, I can also think about the different ways. So I know I'm used to pressing my potato masher in one way, but I notice that it has these other edges. And so I might dip my, my object into the coffee in a way that's unexpected. So maybe um, using its side. And I notice that in doing that, it actually creates dots, right? Um, I could also use the bottom of the handle and see how differently um, the different areas of the, the object kind of impre uh, impress to make a mark. Um, I wanted to show you another way to kind of use that material um, or use the printmaking as a process. Um, so I have like, um, just like a, a plexiglass container with some embossed lettering. And this time I'm going to, instead of pressing it down on top or dipping it into the coffee, um, I'm gonna lay it down onto my surface. And I'm gonna take my rag, my paper towel, dip a little bit of coffee onto it and wipe a thin layer of that coffee onto the surface. Um, and then what I can do is actually flip the paper over and press it into the object. So you have a couple ways of kind of applying or um, creating your impression. I really like to rub it in really well to get all the little intricate designs. And you see here that you can see the, the lettering has come, come out as well. Um, so what I invite you to do um, is to get your materials, even something like a fork, and see how you can use them on your paper as a way to explore. Now, you know, how might you press um, into the paper or alternatively lay the object down and press your paper into it? Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen again. Let me try that again. All right. So I want, I'm gonna put a little timer um, on right now. Um, and we'll have about, oh, I'm gonna put eight minutes on the clock. And we'll go ahead and try as many different ways to apply the coffee, um, but also different ways that we want to press the object with the coffee onto the paper. And again, you can substitute this with whatever other pigment that you're using. Um, it's also really interesting with this exploration. Um, I, I love to look at it a little afterwards, um, let it dry for a bit, because sometimes the pools or drips of coffee um, have a different technique or texture um, and a different value than um, some of the the thin layers of coffee.
but I'll go ahead and I, if, um, if you don't mind putting that music on again, um, I'll mute myself and we'll just go ahead and explore together. Nabila, I might have to have you stop screen sharing so I can share music. There we go, thank you. All right.
have about 30 seconds left before, before we're gonna go on to the next. I hope you got a good amount of time to explore. Um, I know I was able to fill my paper up really well. Um, if you don't mind um, kind of keeping, showing all of your work, I'd love to see it. Ah, those impressions look great. Really lovely. And I can already see that there's so many different patterns that are emerging um, by just like the repetition of material. Um, so sometimes, yeah, it's, it's, it's looking really, really cool. Um, and I, what I really love about this um, project is that we're, you know, I had no idea that this had a flat surface until I started stamping it, you know, that there's different, things about the material that you learn um, through the process. Um, but why don't we go ahead and get um, a new sheet of paper out. Um, and this time I want you to think about kind of paring down the material. So um, just use one or two objects. Um, that you really want to focus on. Um, and if you want, you can start creating a kind of pattern or composition. But again, this is still in that exploratory vein. Um, but it might be good to kind of pare things down and get it started. So um, get a clean sheet. Um, and this time, you know, you might even think about how you will, you know, maybe I'll use that lid and my fork and how I might then arrange those two on the paper. Um, so we'll go ahead and I'll put another, um, another eight minutes on the clock um, and we'll get started. And this time feel free to, as soon as you fill up that paper or you feel like that composition is where you want it to be, use that, that third paper as well. Um, if you have any questions, let me know, but we'll go ahead and get started. Oh, and if we could get that music on again, I love, I love LinkedIn's playlist.
So just think about one more minute getting to um, a stopping place or um, a place where you feel like, you know, you wanna, uh, you wanna let things settle. Um, but just, um, well, I guess it's now 45 seconds. <laughs> All right, so go ahead, come, we'll, we'll put down our things, wipe it away. Um, and before we get to our next part, let's, I wanna again see some of the, the different progress that you made. So I ended up just using that fork over and over again. Uh, and, and I know some of these will drip and spill too. Um, so if you need to tilt your computer downward, that's wonderful. Oh, these are really beautiful. Some of the just like repetition that I see here. It's lovely. Wow, wow. Um, so what I wanted to do is um, actually, I want us to, just like we do as part of the studio in a school practice, where we break things up into a kind of exploratory phase, a demo phase, a um, working phase and then a reflection phase. I want us all to really reflect on what we've done, but in order to do that, it, it kind of is nice to kind of clear up your space and really just have um, your work in front of you. So I'm actually going to give you like just a minute or two to like kind of tidy up, um, get everything in order, um, take a little breath, and so that we can really have a proper um, reflection. So uh, just a couple minutes. Um, to get things kind of out of the way. Nabila, someone is asking that you repeat the four parts of the studio lesson model. So it's actually a three-part lesson model, <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it. I may have said it in a kind of four-part way, though, um, which is there's usually a engagement or demonstration period, um, and then there is the work period, um, so the students um, look at how the artist is working in the demonstration, um, then use that knowledge from that demo to work. And then there's always a time at the end to reflect. And the importance on reflection um, is a big part of the studio model. Um, uh, it's how you can learn and grow as an artist. And if you think about it, even in our own studio practices, I mean, there's the whole cliche of the painter making a line in the carpet by <laughs> just moving back and forth, um, looking and reflecting on that progress. Um, so uh, yeah, so it's, it's a model that we do in our studio so um, intuitively that it, it, it's great to bring it into the classroom as well. Um, so I mean, I'm, I'm also going to take, so I'm gonna take out my print, but I'm also going to take out um, some of the drawings I did with Langdon. Um, and what I really loved about this process is that I used some of the 
the tools that I um, that I drew as part of Langdon's contour line, and I got to know them both in in form uh, with contour, um, and also uh, in a completely different way as a three dimensional object. Um, and let me go ahead and bring up some reflection questions um, that we we prepared for for you to think about in your own work, right? Um, so let me share my screen. And we'll go here. So we wanted to take a minute to just um, reflect on what we did. Um, was there something that surprised you during the art exploration? Um, was there something that when you were working with the tools um, for your drawing or print, did you come up with ideas for a different tool to use um, or a different thing that you really wanted to, to dip into some coffee? Um, and was, was there something that you discovered in the process of making? Um, and in using these questions, we really invite you to um, uh, add a slide to this presentation that we have um, and share photos of your work as a kind of uh, living document of this experience. Um, and as, even for those who are going to watch it later, um, we would love to see this document kind of grow and balloon into this mini portfolio of, of our shared experience. Um, and Lyndon, is there anything else that you wanted to add here? Yeah, um, we also would like to invite you all um, just for a, a minute to um, contribute to a shared whiteboard, um, which if you haven't made a collaborative document or a collaborative mess, as it sometimes turns out like this, it is so much fun. I have actually been starting my drawing, my online drawing classes like this each week. And it's just this like 10 minutes of, of just like, ah, whatever we want to do and get it on the, on the screen. But what we'd like to invite you to do is share one thing from your experience today. It can be a drawing, it can be a comment, you can use the stamps. Uh, whatever you would like. I am going to um, share a whiteboard now. And I believe Kinsey um, and Kim are making um, it instructions available to those of you who haven't done this before so that you can um, access the annotation feature. Um, but for those of you who do know, um, you should have the toolbar, um, I think you go under more and then um, if you find an enable annotation um, and you'll get a toolbar with text, drawing, stamping, um, you can change, there we go, you can change the color. I am going to make a cup of coffee. <laughs> which is what I have been sipping this whole time while using the coffee as my ink. And I'm also gonna leave a comment. Oops. And I'll let you guys go to town for a second. <laughs>
Oh, I love that little press, that little coffee press. That's so cute, whoever made that. <laughs> So we'll just give you guys a few more minutes here. Oh, someone said they had a quiet mind for the first time in a while. That is nice to hear. <laughs> And for those of you who haven't used this feature in Zoom before, I have not only been doing this with my classes, my friends and I are doing Zoom happy hours and making drawings like this. It's almost like exquisite corpse. It's a lot of fun. All right, everybody get your last few little marks and words out there. And then I think this will save automatically, Kinsey. Um, I don't know if you'll get a copy since you're the administrator. Okay, great. Yes, it'll save automatically and we're gonna share it out um, in the follow-up email with participants. Terrific. All right, I am going to pause the share. Okay, and we'll come back here. Um, and I just wanna say thank you to everyone. This was really different to have this many people participate in an art making act activity, um, but super fun. And I love seeing all of your faces. So thank you for participating. Um, and uh, Nabila, do you wanna add anything? Other than just thank you so much. And it was such a relaxing and fun time for me. I hope it was for you as well. Um, and please, please take pictures of your work and, and share it with us. I want to, I want to have like, just see it all. Yes. And one more thing too, um, Studio in a School has been really active during the last couple of months still with students in schools and, and families uh, because the kids can't help be, be stuck with their families right now. Um, and they've come up with something called Studio in a Home. Um, so if you visit the website and actually um, I can share that link um, in the chat. You'll see there's a lot of different activities um, that are there available um, and videos, step-by-step -step instructions. Um, and also um, a really great um, thing that Studio has been doing is a daily sketch. Um, so there are different sketch prompts every day. Um, so something for you all to take a look at. We actually have a few minutes left in the session um, while I say the closing announcements. If you have any questions for Langdon or Nabila, please share them in the chat and we might be able to address them. And if not, we can perhaps address them in the follow-up email. Um, while you're entering any of those, I just want to give a very big thank you to you Lang Langdon and Nabila for this time and these activities. Um, I just feel like this is such a lovely way to close our digital conference. So thank you so much and Studio in a School as well. Um, and thank you all for joining us for this, which is our final face-to-face um, -face at 4 p.m. session for 2020. Uh, as we have said before, to access um, all of the materials and the recording of this video, we will be sending you an email. Um, with links and all of that information. If you'd like to access recordings of any of the previous face-to-face -face at four sessions, we do have a video gallery on the New York City Arts and Education Roundtable website that you are welcome to visit. And I can actually copy that link and share it to you all 
right here. There you are. Um, so face-to-face, -face, sadly, is over for this year, but do be on the lookout for announcements of upcoming, upcoming um, roundtable digital events in the near future. You can find announcements on our website, our Instagram, or you can join our mailing list. Um, we're gonna leave the call open for any last minute questions. And for those of you who would like to maybe save the chat and otherwise, that's about it. Thank you all so much. Kinsey, I think I'll also add to this too. So hi everyone, my name is Kim. I'm the Managing Director of the Roundtable. Thank you so much for your participation in our Face-to-Face -face at Four series. This has ballooned far beyond our wildest dreams and um, we're so grateful to be sharing this uh, special moment with you um, and this opportunity to expand what the field of arts education looks like, especially given the uh, current times that we are in. Um, if you enjoyed our programming, if you have comments, suggestions, please be on the lookout for a survey that we are going to be sending out likely at the beginning of next week. As Kinsey mentioned, we really are seeking to offer um, more programming in the future and value your input. Really, we read every single survey. Each comment is carefully considered. Your voice is heard. It matters to the roundtable. So please, I hope you'll take a moment to fill that out um, when it is sent around. Let's see, so we'll see. Leave, I think, the chat open for another minute or two. I'll put back on the playlist. Um, and we'll see you soon, I'm sure.